It's called the Retroid RP Mini V2. Getting some buzz. Yeah, and we've got a pretty detailed review right here. Think of it as our uh, our guide for this deep dive. Okay. It'll give us a good look at what this thing is all about. You know, features, design, and well, if it's actually worth considering for portable gaming fans. All right, let's jump in. Unboxing, you open it up. Mm -hmm. What's the first vibe? The review mentions the device, obviously, plus a USB-C cable and a fast charger. Standard stuff, yeah. Seems practical, they want you gaming quickly. Right, but the device itself, what's the immediate takeaway? Well, according to this review, the thing that jumps out right away is the screen. It's a 3.92 inch AMOLED. AMOLED, okay. Yeah, with a 1240 by 1080 resolution. Now that's uh, quite different from the usual IPS screens you see. How so? What's the impact? The review really hammers this point home. It apparently changes the whole visual experience. Okay. They talk about really vibrant colors, like really popping. Yeah. And good brightness too. Exactly. That kind of vividness that, you know, really draws you in. And it's not just about looking nice, I guess. They mentioned the AMOLED tech gives you more detail, better color accuracy. Yeah, precisely. Think about um, older games, classic stuff. Like SNES. Right, SNES, Game Boy Advance. Those games with really bright color palettes. This screen makes them look, well, maybe even better than you remember, like a fresh coat of paint, kind of. Interesting. But it's not just for 2D pixel art. The review says it adds real depth to, say, GameCube or PS2 titles, too. You see more subtle details. Okay, so visually, it's a step up. Yeah. What about the feel of the thing, mm -hmm. the design? The review mentions it's more compact, streamlined compared to older Retrade models. Yeah, they've definitely changed the design language. The big thing is the uh, the full glass front. A glass front. Mm -hmm. Gives it a much sleeker, more modern look. Mm -hmm. The reviewer says it feels more, well, premium in your hands. So it feels more substantial, maybe, mm -hmm. despite being smaller. Seems like it. It's definitely a different aesthetic direction. And they mentioned it is smaller than the Pocket 2S. Usually smaller means maybe less comfortable for long play sessions. That's often the trade-off, yeah. But the review suggests this Mini V2 manages both. It's portable and comfortable. Apparently so. They seem to think Retroid found a good balance there. Pocketable, but still okay to hold for a while. How'd they manage that? Does it come down to the controls? That seems to be a big part of it. I mean, a great screen and nice design are good, but you need solid controls. True. And the review is pretty clear. The buttons, and especially the analog sticks, are a real upgrade. Ah, the sticks. They went with Hall Effect, didn't they? They did. That sounds promising. Stick drift is the worst. How does that Hall Effect tech actually help? Well, unlike, you know, the traditional sticks with physical contacts that wear down. Right, causing the drift. Exactly. Hall Effect uses magnets. No physical contact for the sensing mechanism, so much less wear and tear. <laughs> Meaning consistently high responsiveness, better sensitivity. The review really stresses this way more accurate control in games. It's a noticeable improvement over, say, the original Retro Pocket Mini's controls. Okay, so it looks good, feels good, controls are tight, what's making it all run software-wise. It's Android 10, but there's something about an upgrade. Yeah, Android 10 out of the box, but the uh, the crucial bit is official support for an Android 13 upgrade. Why is that a big deal for this kind of device? Well, for emulation handhelds, having a newer Android version like 13 just opens up more possibilities, yeah. better compatibility with the latest emulators, newer streaming apps, that sort of thing. Uh -huh. The review actually contrasts it with the Pocket 2S. That one runs Android 11, but apparently doesn't have the same official upgrade path laid out. So it's more future-proof. In a way, yeah. Yeah, if you plan to keep it long term and want access to newer software, that Android 13 support is definitely a plus. The review also mentioned the interface feels smoother, mm -hmm. faster, quicker switching between apps and emulators. Yeah, it sounds like the hardware power and the system integration are working well together. It's not just about the Android version number, it's the whole experience feeling you know, polished and snappy. Makes sense. Yeah. A clean interface, smooth transitions that definitely adds to the premium feel. Absolutely. It avoids that feeling of uh, fighting with the device just to play a game. So let's pull it all together. What's the overall verdict from this review, the big picture for the RP Mini V2? The reviewer really positions it as um, a significant step for Retroid, especially in the compact handheld space. How so? It comes across as a genuinely high quality device. Great screen, good design. It hits that sweet spot apparently. Portable enough, but powerful enough for a huge range of games. 
Sounds like they were aiming for that no compromises feel in a small form factor. I think that's fair to say. The review highlights the mix. Sleek design, Android flexibility, decent processing power, the improved UI, and those precise Hall effect controls. Okay, and where does it sit compared to other Retroid devices? If you know their lineup, how does this one fit in? It's interesting, the reviewer kind of places it between models. Performance-wise, maybe closer to the Pocket 5. The bigger one. Yeah, but in terms of size and portability, it's more like the Pocket 2S. Okay. But the key takeaway seems to be that the Mini V2 actually surpasses both in some important ways. Like the screen. Definitely the AMOLED screen. That's a big differentiator. Plus the more modern design and maybe just a more cohesive overall experience for classic gaming fans. Got it. So if we're distilling this deep dive, the key message from the review is, the Retroid RPE Mini V2 is a serious upgrade for small handhelds, mainly because of that killer AMOLED screen and the much better controls. Yeah, that sums it up well. Which actually brings up a kind of interesting thought to leave you with. Oh, yeah. 